Yeah, Muslim. No problem. See you. Yeah. 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 Are you? You're not Muslim. No, I'm not. I'm not Yet. Really. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to get him to convert. So, what are you? Do you? What do you? Do you believe in a specific I'm religion? Not religious, but I like to read religious texts because okay. it's interesting. And maybe I'll find something I find. What about the, the the idea of God's existence? Do you believe in a creator, higher power? I feel like it's a bit reductive to reject it entirely. You reject it? No, I don't. It's reductive to reject it. Exactly. You say. Okay. So, so what is your position on it? Um, I like to think that if, if there's any divine being, they're kind enough to let me know. That is, is it okay if you come a little bit closer because I can't hear you what you're saying? Sorry. I like to think that if there is a god, they'll be cool enough to let me know that they exist. Okay. Um, how would they? How would they let you know they exist? Well, this is the problem. The argument is that they let us know exist, that we exist by the sheer miracle of existence. But okay. existence is always fun, so I don't know if that there is a god. He's kind all the time. So. Uh, let me ask you this question. If this life was a test, and that test is whether you would believe in God and follow his commands, and whether you would reject him, would it make sense for God to give you a sign that he exists while he's testing you whether you would believe in him or not? My main issue is that I am not entirely convinced in the merits of the notion of free will. The idea that I'm being tested, therefore, is kind of uncomfortable to me if I don't believe that I can make decisions in any other way that I've made decisions before. I don't believe you. Sorry? I don't believe you. You don't believe me? Yeah. I know, I know you live your life knowing that you have a free will to choose what you do what you're choosing you believe you chose to come here you believe you're speaking to me now by choice and you can walk away anytime you want I can walk away but I only came here because this exists no 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 but you came here assumes that you made a choice not necessarily you said I came here that's, I was not forced to come that's here that's a semantic argument where arguably the very no 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 I'm, I'm talking about what you believe no I know I know but I haven't been convinced yet no, no, it's not about being convinced, but you agree with me. You operate on your life based on you choosing things that you know you're choosing things that not no one is forcing you. Because I've never... So I've if never, I kill you right now, or I, uh, you don't believe that I should be blamed for that. That's not my argument. My but argument is essentially, you're trying to say that morality doesn't exist. No, 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 no. I'm trying to say that if I do that, mm -hmm. I could not, I should not be held accountable because it was something forced I didn't have a choice in. Well, that's no, that's what you're saying. That essentially morality can exist if free will doesn't. Um, when if you kind of take a religious position, morality only exists as the things that justify logically actions that must happen as a result of free will. Okay. So, I'm curious. I've never. No, but how do? You, but I, I didn't. I didn't feel like you gave me an answer. But what you just said, you know. I've never. I've had various priests. I'm, I'm just we're having a nice discussion. I'm not sorry to. My, to my, trap my you religious like background that. is mainly Catholic. Okay. Um, and I've had various discussions with with priests and religious officials that I know. Um, who've always tried to convince me that free will is an absolute given. But I've never really been comfortable in my mind that the decisions I've made in life could ever have gone any other way than the way that they have. Okay. So I, I struggle with that. No, no, actually the Qur'an has a very interesting verse about that. Is that the, the people, the, the Qur'an says what you're saying, and it says that people who don't believe use that as an excuse not to believe. Interesting. Right? So it says that, that uh, Those who disbelieved, they said, if Allah willed, you would not have disbelieved. Right? So Allah says, this is how they disbelieve, and this is how their ancestors disbelieve, using that excuse. So right? it's an excuse then? Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying to you. I don't believe you. I know that deep down you know that you're living in. When you do your day-to-day -day things, you do them based on you making your choices. But when it comes to belief in God, all of a sudden this idea of free will comes into the picture, which to me is a bit inconsistent. It is like the same people who come to me and say, I do not know if this existence is real and this and that. This is the same hypocrisy. I say, okay, why don't you go in front of the bus and jump on top of the building? Why don't you live your life based on the claims that you make that this life might not, might not be real? No, you live your life that this life is real. But when I talk to you about God's existence, oh, maybe not everything exists. Maybe when, I, when it comes to God, all of a sudden there is a complete different kind of uh, 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 argumentation when it comes to God. A completely different criteria. Why? Because there is deep, deep within the person does not want to believe in a creator. Well, obviously it's terrifying. Because there's, there's always the fear that if one is wrong, one is definitely sinned. I don't believe necessarily that there's such a clear distinction between free will and a kind of divine theodicy understanding of the world and daily life. Because I still struggle to believe that my actions on a daily basis are entirely free. Okay. But as soon as I come to believe that, I think I will be forced to find a faith that was Yeah, but I think you're wasting your time by even thinking about whether... Okay, let me ask you, let me tell you this, and, and I want you to think about this for a second. You can never find out whether you, you have free will or not. If you believe in a creator, no, if you accept the idea of existence of a creator, if you don't accept the, uh, the idea of existence of a creator, you have to believe you don't have free will. Now, this, if you believe in a creator, you cannot reconcile between the two, logically. 
If you don't believe in a creator, when I say creator, I mean you believe in an all-powerful, all-knowledgeable entity, right? Yes. So you cannot reconcile between an all-powerful, all-knowledgeable entity that wells everything in existence, that knows everything in existence, that created you, and in the same time, the fact that you have... No, I wouldn't use the term free will. I don't like to use that term anyways, because we don't believe we have free will. Well, this is essentially a Calvinist argument that God preordains a kind of elect just people that will be saved eventually. We don't believe that. No, 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 that's a uh, sort of... Calvinism, yeah. Yeah, Calvinism. Yeah, yeah, we don't believe that. We, yeah. we, we say, because you've got free will, and you've got, uh, you've got hard determinism, You've got people who are completely libertarian when it comes to free will, and you've got a school in the middle called compatibilism, which tries to, to reconcile between the two, right? And there's various arguments that people make for that. But in an Islamic perspective, we say this is not something that the human mind can explain rationally. We say that I cannot explain to you rationally using examples that the Creator is, is all powerful, all knowing, wills everything in the, in, the, in the universe, and He's given me the choice to choose that which deals with my afterlife in the same time. But I'm saying this is not an excuse to say this is religion, this religion is true or not. I should look if this evidence, ha if this religion has evidence that is true, if this religion has evidence that is true, then by default, it claiming that I have free will is also true. This is how I would advise you look at it. I, I'm open to considering it that way. You, okay. You've been very helpful. I don't get no much exposure. No problem. Okay, so, so, so let me ask you this question. How would you determine whether a specific religion is true or not? Because now this is the crux of the matter, isn't it? How then would I say this religion is from God or this religion is true or it's not true? Well, arguably its tenets would have to be fulfilled. That whatever it says God will do, God will do. Okay. And that's never really been reached by anything. Okay. Um, some of the most hilarious things I've read about in Christian um, theology are where they kind of... My, my favorite thing I read about was it was a belief called millenarianism, where in the very early Christian church, they had the belief that essentially, um, because in, in the book of Revelation, it says that in a thousand years, God will come back um, and judge everyone. It, yes. it says specifically a thousand years. I know, I know. Um, and then when that didn't happen, no one knew what was going on. Um, so that's people, not the only false uh, no, no, obviously, prophecy in obviously. the Bible. <laughs> no, but that's, but that's what I'm saying is, yes. for example, where yes. the only way we'll ever find an objective proof is if a very specific tenet of a faith. I like what you said. It's objectively true. I agree with what you said. And I don't think that's really happened to me for anything. That's the point. I, what you're saying, I love what you're saying because I'll tell you what, it's a sign of sincerity, what you're saying. Because most unsincere people, what they would do when I ask them for a criteria, they would claim there's no criteria. Okay, what will prove to you that God exists? Nothing really can prove that God exists. Okay, why are you asking me to ask to show you that God exists there? Which shows the inconsistency and the hypocrisy of some atheists, right? But the point is, you're showing sincerity because you're actually given a criteria. Now, the point is, if I were to show you now that Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago made tens of predictions. And that they were all right? And they were all right. They will all happen. But this is the case, right? Yeah, Let me yeah. give you some examples of what the Prophet. And the challenge is to find something that he said will happen in a specific way, and it didn't. Like you were saying, that he says this will happen and it doesn't happen. Prophet Muhammad made tens of predictions. I'll give you just a few examples of, of what he said. The Prophet he said, you will see the barefoot Bedouin Arabs competing in building the tallest buildings. All right? So who are the barefoot Bedouin Arabs? Bedouins are people who live in the desert. Yeah, because yeah. Some, most people don't know for some yeah. reason, right? So wh where is the tallest building in the world today? Sorry? They're, well, they're all in Arabia. Yeah. And then one of the, the largest clock in the world is in Mecca. Mecca is Absolute. itself is right to Absolute. tall buildings. Absolutely. But you can argue then that it's a self-fulfilling process. Exactly. And this is how I'm going to answer it right now. First is that the Prophet Salam and the Quran as well commands you not to spend money in things which are not useful. Not to uh, use money. So it's not something that the Prophet told the people to do. It's to be, if you're wasting your money on things which are not important and people are dying of hunger, the Prophet would tell you not to do that. He would tell you the opposite. So you're not really following what the Prophet says. That's the first thing. The second thing I would say is how did they get the, the financial capacity to be able to build the buildings anyway? What happened? Sorry? You know what happened? Well, oil. You find oil, exactly, right. Which you could argue is a kind of divine intervention. No, but the Prophet, he said 1,400 years ago, the earth would be his treasures and money would become abundant within you. So he didn't only say that he would be building these tall buildings, but he also said that the and earth... The money would come from those buildings. Yeah, the earth will be puking his treasures, giving out his treasures, and money will become abundant within you, the Arabs. So you specifically telling them that this will happen. So it's not only that he told them what they will do, but he also mentioned that's, the reason. That's okay, now the Prophet Ali Salaam said, now there are so many countries that are Muslim today. Now, many of them, we can see even most of them, the Prophet ﷺ named that their Islam will enter them, by name. So the Prophet said Islam will enter Egypt, right? Islam will enter uh, Syria, Islam will enter Lebanon, Islam will enter Yemen, right? Islam will enter Pakistan, 
India, somewhere in Constantinople, which is Turkey. And he named each of these countries. And he said, you will overcome the Roman and Persian Empire. And when he was saying that, and I wanted to keep that in mind, when he was saying that, he had really like, what, 300 followers around him. Oh, and the, the rise of the Ottoman Empire is entirely miraculous. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. When the Prophet was there, I'm telling you, he had 300 followers. He was being persecuted in, in Mecca. He didn't know if he's going to live tomorrow or not. His companions didn't know if they're going to live tomorrow or not. And all of a sudden, this man is telling them, you will overcome the biggest empires of the time, the Roman and Persian Empire. An atheist historian, he said, this is paramount to saying the Eskimos are going to conquer USA and Russia. Imagine, go to the Eskimos now and say all oh, these yeah, bunch yeah. of Eskimos are no, going to conquer. Right, so it was the same thing. And now look at the map. Islam spread exactly what the Prophet said. He said, Zuya Kliya Al Earth was projected onto me. And I've seen its eastern side and western side, and Islam was spread in the east and the west. East and the west of Saudi Arabia. And today, look, east and west of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Islam spread, right? So this is what the Prophet said. The Prophet said, the, the deserts of Arabia will become green again. Now I want to show you something interesting. What did he say? He said the deserts of Arabia will become green once again. Now let's see what uh, nature, you know nature obviously, right? I'm familiar with nature. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the biggest obviously in ma science magazine in the world. So I don't know who's not familiar with it. Okay, so let's see what nature magazine says about that. So I want you to think about what I said. The prophet said the deserts of Arabia will become green again. What does again there mean? If I say something, well, they were before. exactly. If I say something will happen again, it means that something happened already once. So well, he's making it, two claims. It's a scientific prediction that the, the seas as they existed in the past of the Arabian Peninsula were green and full of life. Exactly. So he's making two claims. He's making the first claim is that in the past this was meadows and rivers and green, and he's making a claim about the future that it will be also meadows and rivers and green. Now, according to Nature Middle East, unveiling Arabia's grain bust, right? And they show you uh, traces of 5,000 ancient lakes. They show you fo fossils of animals. That like, uh, let's say, uh, whales and animals yeah, no, that only live where there's a lot of water, right? So this is when it comes to the past. So we know thousands of years ago, which you wouldn't know, which, but we know today. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. How do you know they use satellites? You see the traces of Asian lakes through the satellites and all of that, right? Now, he said they would become green again in the future as well. So, this is the deserts of Arabia. Look, 1987, 1991. 2000 and 2012 NASA yeah so you see the, the huge difference that is happening so the prophet is not only making a, something a claim about the, the future he's making a claim about the past right that is I, I have to go very soon okay, <laughs> okay. Really so, so the point is give me your phone let me give you a, a, a video that mentions all of these predictions on YouTube I'm, I'm fine thanks no problem no problem no problem. No problem. no problem no problem no problem have a read no problem see you